and I take the tail up when they all went out on a school trip. Only Bryn couldn't go up the castle. He had to stay behind. Bryn watched the other children stream through the doorway into the tower. He heard their excited voices as they began the climb. He stared down at his wonky legs and his two left feet. Usually he didn't mind, but today he would love to have gone to the top of that tall, tall tower. One by one, children popped out at the top of the tower and waved to Bryn, Sam, Nia and Aled. Not Owen. Mr Deacon brought him back down. Owen's face was white and he stared down at his feet miserably. Afraid of heights, eh? said Mr Deacon, their teacher. My brother was exactly the same. When all the children were down, they were allowed to wander round by themselves. No climbing on the ruins, Mr Deacon said sternly, and no misbehaving. Beth Ann and the mums went to look in the castle shop, and Bryn was left alone. He stared at the doorway to the tower. He could manage the stairs at home if he took care. No one was watching. As fast as he could, using his frame, he went to the foot of the stairs and looked up. Deep grooves had been worn in the stone steps by all the feet that had climbed them for hundreds of years. Bryn hid his walking frame inside the door and took a deep breath and began to climb. It was very hard work, but there was an iron rail to hold on to and step by step, Bryn climbed up and up the tower. Halfway up, he was so tired that he had to stop for a rest. He waited until he got his breath back and then he climbed up and up some more. And there he is wiping the sweat off his brow. And he's far, far above the rest of the tourists. His two left feet ached and he didn't think he'd ever been so tired in his life. But then, at last, he arrived at the top of the tower. Hooray! The wind whipped his straight brown hair until it stood up on end. He looked around him. He could see for miles and miles. The church in the village below, the cars on the busy road, even as far as the Brecon beacons, blue and misty in the horizon. It was wonderful. He peered over the walls at the place where he'd been sitting. It was a long, long way down. All the children, the mums and Mr Deacon, were standing in a group. They looked like little black beetles from up here. Bryn cupped his hands around his mouth and shouted as loud as he could, Hey, I'm up here! I climbed all the way up on my own two left feet. Come on up, Owen, it's great up here. And Owen stared up, he shook his head slowly. Then Mr. Deacon whispered something in his ear. This time, Owen nodded. Together, Mr. Deacon and Owen climbed the tower. Bryn could hear Mr. Deacon's voice counting off the steps as they climbed up and up. Soon, Owen's head popped out of the stairway and Mr. Deacon, who was a bit red and puffed after climbing the winding stairs twice in one afternoon, stood right at the top of the tower with Bryn. Bryn looked at Owen, Owen looked at Bryn, then they both looked over the battlements at everyone below and waved. Going down was much easier for Bryn, although his legs were very tired, so halfway up Mr Deacon picked him up and carried him the rest of the way, piggyback. Outside the tower door he stood him on his own two left feet. Dan Williams began it. Bryn, he chanted, and one by one the whole class joined in. Bryn, the Owen made it to the top, they shouted. And then hooray for Bryn and Owen. And there they are, the stars of the moment. And finally, we made it to the top, Owen, said Bryn. We did, didn't we? And Bryn smiled his great big smile.